previously on Kungsleden. Two weeks ago I had arrived in Sweden to hike the 350 kilometers of southern Kungsleden. On the hike I fell in love with the deep lonely forests and the barren fjells. So at the end I made the decision to continue my journey and also hike the northern part of Kungsleden from Hemavan to Arvisko. A stretch of 440 kilometers. I boarded the train from Stulien to Östersund and from there I continued on bus over Storuman to Hemavan. This transfer took one and a half days. After walking for two weeks straight I did not mind sitting on my ass for a while. It was the early afternoon of the 16th of July when I continued my hike in Hemavan. My pack was heavily loaded with food and a six pack of Norlandsguld. Much to my delight, Johannes, a fellow hiker whom I had met on southern Kungsleden, had made the transition to Hemavan just the day before. He was waiting for me at a bar just two kilometers into the trail. This evening the wind would pick up strength and it would stay quite windy for the next few days. Two days earlier, on the bus to Hemavan, I had exchanged a few friendly words with a Swedish guy who also wanted to hike Kungsleden. He was wearing a pair of bright red pants and his name was Joachim. I had met him again on the second day and today on the third day. We hiked the last stretch towards Eigert Stugan together. Delikate Füße.
The last days had been very windy, so I was glad when I reached a little shelter at noon, where I could have my lunch in peace. To my surprise, Joachim, whom I had left behind two days ago, already sat in the shelter. He had secretly overtaken me during the last night. Once more we joined parties until we reached the campground in Jekvik. We were in a good mood when we approached Jekvik. The town provided a well-stocked grocery store where we could buy fresh reindeer meat, fresh fruit and most importantly some cans of our beloved Nordlandsgult. After the long days in the cold wind we decided to take a day off to wash our clothes and fill our bellies. During the free day Johannes caught up and we had a nice day at the campground, drinking beer and sharing our experiences with the other hikers. The spirit was high when we left Jekvik towards Kvikjok to embark on our first lake crossing. Johannes stayed behind at Jekvik. He was not in a hurry because he had booked his flight in advance and had plenty time left to reach it. So this was the last time I saw him on this trip.
After hiking two days on my own, Joachim caught up with me. He had fallen behind due to having trouble with his knee. We would make the approach to Quick York tomorrow together. Unlike everybody else, Joachim was not hiking Kungsleden for fun. He was here for work. He has a PhD in culinary science and his mission was to conduct a study to examine what hikers eat on the Kungsleden. For the study, he wanted to stay a few days at the Fjell station in Kvikjok, so he could interview other hikers about their food choices. This meant that we drank a few last beers together and said our goodbyes. Gekostet, aber es war sehr erfrischend. So. Nice. In this area I met a couple from Sweden who were on the mission to hike the entire Kungsleden in only two weeks and without buying re any resupplies on the way. Usually this takes three weeks and people only carry food for a few days. So these guys had definitely earned my respect, but they were paying the pain price for it. This evening I approached what is probably the most iconic part of Kungsleden, Mount Skjerfe and the river delta below it.
At noon of July the 21st, I reached fail station Satulwotka, where I had a warm meal while waiting for the ferry. The ferry crossing was followed by a bus ride, which bridges a 30 km stretch that can only be walked on a street. Due to the northern latitude, it was still bright day when I reached the boats at Lake Toysayaure at 9 pm after a very long day. I was still in good shape, so I decided to row over the lake on my own. I do not have much experience in rowing boats, so keeping the boat on a straight line in the wind and waves was harder than expected. 20 minutes later, I finally reached the other side with very tired arms. Der beste Seemann war euch. Here in the north, Kungsleden passes closely to Mount Kebnekaise, Sweden's highest mountain. I decided to take a little detour over Kebnekaise Fjell station in order to make it to its summit. The ascent was steep and I was rewarded with a thick cloud cover on the top. Through a lonely side valley I made my way back to Kungsleden. Das 
So, endlich ist der Tag vorbei. Morgen geht es hier rechts raus. Weiter zurück zum Kungsleben. Ein bisschen weiter oben ist liegen geblieben. Da, wo ich die beiden anderen getroffen habe, die sind bestimmt sind eingeschneit worden. The stretch from Kebne Kaiser to Abisku is the most populated part of Kungsleden. You will meet other people every five minutes. I had not had a chance to buy any fresh food since leaving Yekvik, so the days of dehydrated and canned food also pressed down on my morale. In addition, it had gotten quite cold. So at this point, I mainly wanted to rush through the last few days and reach Arbisco quickly.
Like most hikers who finish a long trail, I was happy and sad at the same time when I approached Abisko. Happy to get back to a warm and food rich life in civilization. Sad because I knew I would be missing the majestic landscapes and the worryless life on the trail very soon. I had been on Kungsleden for five weeks in total since starting the hike at southern Kungsleden. It later turned out that I had lost six kilos on the trail. It was August the 4th when I finally reached the northern terminus at Abisko. In the evening I boarded the warm train to Kiruna to devour a huge meal and to catch my flight back to Stockholm and Germany. <laughs> 